Welcome, everybody, to the Euphoria Podcast. It's good to be back. I'm Dracos here with Cajal. As always, we're available on YouTube, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and SoundCloud. And this week, we get to talk to the three best junglers in the LEC, the Me? father, the son, and the self-made man. Uh, I was kind of debating if we said the three best junglers and Yankos, but I didn't want to like, <laughs> but he's not here for it, so it feels super, super BM to like just insta-throw him under the bus. Three best junglers in Cajal. Three best strong, but then I'm flaming you, bro. Yeah, but I, I, I lit you up me. last dude, week you, off broadcast. Dude, I've been flamed so much recently. I don't mind, dude. <laughs> All these playoffs memes just keep it, keep them coming. Okay, All right. I mean that's pretty. Light. You know like what? I think seven is my lucky number now. I'm sure of it. Seven is your lucky number going forwards. Yeah. All right, we'll find out. When's your seventh cast? Uh, this year. Have yeah. we already done it? No, I think it's next this week or next week. Yeah. Is it something's gonna happen? What's, I don't know. Is the world going to end? <laughs> Is the world going to end? No, no, you're, no, you're just going to ascend. Like light will come from your eyes and you'll float off the ground. You'll just spew incoherent The number babble. seven just like lights itself up on my head and the new series of it begins. <laughs> We're getting weird. <laughs> I like it. Um, but before we talk to those guys, uh, we need to talk a little bit about week two. Uh, and so, Cadrell, looking back at last week, I was like, God, there's a lot of ways we can talk about mm. a week of League of Legends. Mm. But since you're here... And the people, people love some cable right now. I want to um, basically steal creative ideas from you in this segment that I would, I'm going to call, is it illegal? Where we look back on week two and I ask you about things, concept, players in general. And mm-hmm. you tell me if it's illegal and we talk a little bit about it. Okay. Um, so I'm going to start off with an easy one and just give you your avenue to... Um, just a flame. So you want one word on this here, legal no, or illegal? No, or you don't can, like a judge statement? Uh, you know, yeah, like I'm sentencing them to like five then, years in... In the end, okay. illegal. Oh, if you want to give me like... I can a, give them a sentence as well. You can give them a sentence? <laughs> yes. <laughs> give them a sentence. I wasn't going to okay. push you that far. You can give okay. them a sentence. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Mm. Mundo Jungle from SK. Okay. The pick is good because you can fast clear. However, against our comp, it was the worst pick on the planet. So completely illegal. At least 10 years in prison for that one. <laughs> All right, I don't know if that's for Tinks or Jazzes. We'll have to find out. Maybe they'll let us know. Maybe five years for each. Yeah, but if you miss this game, this was Schalke versus SK. Yeah. And we looked at these compositions and it was like, it looked pretty doomed on paper. Mm-hmm. But then Mundo got a quadra kill and we were like, okay, maybe. Maybe, maybe this is hope. the game that Mundo just kills everyone. Mm-hmm. And then as Mundo ran fearlessly forward into the front line of Schalke, Swan-shotted. Pantheon just walked past him and one shot his back line. But the Mundo also <laughs> got one shot. I think he had like three armor items versus Camille, Oriana, Kaisa. So they just were like, sorry, what? <laughs> Boom, <laughs> dead. Uh, yeah, so I do percentage ma- max health damage. Oriana does straight magic damage and Camille does true, true damage. damage. Mm. But it's good you got the Thornmail for but the Pantheon. But at least you got the Thornmail for the Who just ran straight past you? To one shot your uh, Got the clip. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yikes. Yeah, that game was rough. And I think definitely a, an example no, of... Don't get me wrong. I think things played good. I just think that sure. the champion he was on is pretty bad. Yeah, it's it's not. I feel like they wanted it to be kind of like Udyr, but not Udyr. And it's just, it was definitely not Udyr. It's, it's one of those things that I've had this experience. You play it in scrims and you're like, damn, this is broken. Then you go on stage and you're like, well, I really want to play it. It's not that great here, but we should, we should just play it anyway. I think it'll be good. And then you're like, oh, damn it. Why did I choose that champion? Oh. That happened to me with Urgot Jungle. Oh, yeah. It was so good in scrims. And then I picked it on stage and I was like, it's the worst case scenario, <laughs> but I'll pick it. it. Is this... <laughs> More or less egregious than your Urgot jungle pick? Uh, more. You think this is more egregious yeah, than your Urgot my, jungle? Yeah, because my Urgot wasn't bad. You know, I dove top. I got yeah. ahead. I yeah. can remember it vaguely. But then the Olaf kept killing me. So that, the Olaf into Urgot's unplayable for Urgot. So now we know. That's my excuse. When are, are Will you ever play Urgot jungle again? Yeah, one, well, maybe one day. Maybe I'll terrorize someone in solo queue with it. <laughs> Just a quick, <laughs> a quick 15. <laughs> the absolute toxicity that is what, like, summoner spellbook uh, challenging smite or god jungle? That is correct. Oh, yeah, The creation god. does come from me. <laughs> you can take credit if it ever pops off when yeah. Canyon starts playing it internationally. I'm holding, I'm holding those stonks. <laughs> when it comes <laughs> out, I'm selling. Yeah, yeah, it's not a short though, bro. No. That's a long. That's, 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 that's the longest hold we've ever Season seen. Season 52. <laughs> <laughs> We got we have reworked for the third time and he's finally a jungle champion yeah. it'll be like when people give credit for genja for being big brain they're like he knew corky the time Lord Triforce corky before it was you know good yeah. it's like guys but it wasn't that good when and he then, was building dude, it. you know it's season 15 league you can look at all the time lords you know i'm the urgot time lord genja's yeah. the corky time lord then you just make a new doctor who series out of league <laughs> there you oh, go is that? that's the dream dude that's, that's the true ascension that's, that's what the true doing. that's the next ascension of league. season 70 when when Cajal ascends yeah some interval of seven um okay on next, 
as we get away from our weird cult obsession now with the number seven. All right, you got to talk. Odawamne winning every lane by 50 CS. If it's a counter match, if it's, if it's whatever, I feel like Odawamne, even if he goes down early, he's always up by 50 CS in the mid game. Mm, it's true. Yeah, Is it's, it illegal? I saw the Rennington into Na against Vitality. I think it was 50 CS up. I mean, I would say it's legal if there was a lot of jungle attention top. But the fact that he's just chilling in a <laughs> 1v1 matchup, just completely just getting these CS leads alone, I don't know if he's just insane or the people he's facing is bad. I'm going to say he's insane. Yeah, so like I'm going to say it's completely legal because he's really good. Um, so okay, not, so let me ask this. If you're letting your opponent get up 50 CS in a counter matchup, is that legal? That's, no, that's completely legal. <laughs> that's a quick <laughs> sentence for life. <laughs> if I'm playing jungle and no junglers visit the top and it's like a 44 bot for 25 minutes and then I come out of the fight for, after 25 minutes, you know, sweat dripping down my forehead, the game's really even, I press tab and my, my top laner's down a level, lost his tower and he's 50 CS down. What, what happened? You counterpicked. <laughs> the hell happened there? You know? I, I feel like we got to go back and look at like the mid. Where is... I just... I haven't watched back all of the VODs like specifically focused on Odawamne, but I do wonder like where is all the CS coming from? Because it can't just be last hit proficiency. This man has to be like a genius he, wave manipulator. He has really good wave management probably. I think that's the way you get... The, the highest CS numbers is your base at the right time mm. um, and you crash waves at the right time so you never get frozen on. I don't think there's a time when I've ever seen Odo Amnet frozen on and needed a jungle attention to like push it out, for example, like TL versus C9, game five, Fudge versus Safari, level three, complete bloodbath, and now Fudge has to crash the wave, gets ganked by three TL members. I've never seen that happen to Rogue. I've never seen Odo Amnet struggle to crash a wave or mm. struggle to freeze a wave. So his wave management must be really good. I think that's something to definitely study if you're a top laner trying to improve. Just watch Odo Amnet's competitive games. Yeah. Uh, see how, he, how efficient he is. Also, speaking of, shout out to Alfari. Because yeah. that we thought for sure that like Perks was going to be the one smurfing on El it's El Safari. The the top gap is everlasting. It's gigantic. The man might as well be back in Wales with how big the top gap is. Like it's it's actually insane. How far he's <laughs> the, the best thing about that whole ser series was the Emily Perkins meme. You know the Emily Perkins <laughs> meme. This was the best thing ever to come out of a series ever with her. What was it? The the. The gerbils or like things? I, I don't remember. I just remember like, I remember clicking on, I have no context whatsoever and just clicking on this random lady's Twitter and she's like, hello, all my new LCS friends. I'm like, who, who is yeah, this Yeah, she had these, these animals, uh, the gerbils, I think they were. Guinea pigs. They were guinea, guinea pigs. pigs. Yeah, and the one was called Fudge. And this was this was a meme breaker. It was the <laughs> best thing ever. Out of control. Um, next up, we're keeping Shalka's in this a lot, one way or another. Broken Blade Aatrox performance versus G2. I think he solo killed Wonder. Yeah, he just so, brought down the clappening. I think one we can Ford. Say. Yep, Gore Drinker. Yep. See, I think the culprit here is Riot Games. Yeah, Gore Drinker is not nice. This is so OP, and you could see it in the fights. He, there was, I think, there's a screenshot. He's in four people. He presses Gore Drinker, one thousand two hundred health bonus from that. That's balanced. That's that's not balanced. That's not balanced. I think the illegal thing there is the item. Yeah, the play was very legal. I think Broken Blade played it really well. Obviously, a solo killing wonder is insane. Yeah. And the fact that he snowballed the lane to the point where he was 1v4 in top and like taking towers 2v1, well played to him. Yeah, but I think we're in a who watches the watchman sort of situation where you mm. probably don't have the authority to sentence the balance team. Yeah, it's true. They have the authority to sentence me. <laughs> so, I'm just their minion. So so what do we do? Do we, no... do we riot? Do we revolt against the system? So then the only real thing question is, do we take down Broken Blade for you choosing this item and abusing something that's completely illegal? It's tough. It's hard to know. No, we, we don't. We, we could drag it back to GME and see if we can find a <laughs> find a comparison. There. No, I um, think it's completely legal. It's good, well played by Broken Blade. I think. I think it probably has to be. Although I will say that, like, I was really surprised when you look at G two losing. For those who didn't watch last week, G two lost a game. Lost a game to Shalke nonetheless. Um, yeah, at this point, if you're if you're like spoiled, like, come on, like, <laughs> no, what no, are you here kidding. for? Um, how, like what do you think about g2 actually losing the game do you think it actually means anything do you think this was like them trolling and messing around because uh, mickey kind of ran it on leona a little bit early game is this a game that you would look back and go oh they win it if they run it back with the same draft or what do you think was the actual issue here i think the draft was a small issue not the biggest one i think mickey made a few mistakes yeah uh, i mean both mickey and hillisang were like zero seven both games each <laughs> on both on leona so they both kind of you know that meme where you shake hands you yeah know? yeah they both ran it um but i think the cled pick was uh, maybe a little bit outdated from Wonder because Kled into Aatrox uh, counters it, right? Because your Q does a healing reduction and then you should win the 1v1. But then you get solo killed. So then Wonder must have misplayed the lane if he's counter picking that matchup or uh, made some mistakes there. And then I think the Aatrox kind of snowballed out of control and both side lanes were not playing that good for G2. I think if they ran it back, I think G2 could play the game a lot better. There were so many openings where they had and there were so many mistakes they made that obviously they could have 
played that game 100 times better, but I just wasn't a fan of the draft overall. I think the Kled last pick wasn't that great for me. Um, but I mean, all props to Schalke, right? Um, smashing on top lane, smashing on bot lane. Yeah, it was overall a good look. Is there any other team this week that you think like really stood out to you? Because when I picked up these examples, I was trying to think about like big moments of big teams and, and nothing quite... I hear it stood out again, but I don't want... I feel like I have to stop talking about here it. I'm obviously either president or at least on the council of the here at fan club. Hmm. Um, but I'm curious, what else Like, what else really felt significant to you this week and week two? Is there anything new that we saw from any team? Astralis is still not very great, guys. I'm yeah. sorry. That's, But I don't want... We don't need to spend any more time on that until something changes. I think Vitality has been quite underwhelming. Um, nothing really standing out in general. Like you said, Astralis has been quite underwhelming. I think in terms of standout, I think the only standout for me was Udyr. <laughs> like this champ yeah. is taking over the weekend in both NA and the EU. Even uh, Jat tweeted about it, I think, in their series versus C9. First big Udyr won us the series in their last game. So... And then Gilius on the Udyr as well against G2. So Udyr has been really popping off, especially in Europe as well. So uh, even though it did have a really bad win rate worldwide, I think people are starting to learn how it works. So I wouldn't say there's any standout teams in particular. Obviously, Rogue still popping off, still looking great. I think XL actually, for me, is not bad by the looks of it. It's true. Think true. about it, they're two and three. So they're sitting around fourth, I think, tied fourth. But the fact that they faced G2 and Rogue already uh, and Mad Lions, all that's left from the top four really is Fnatic kind of, right? So... Uh, I think XL, in terms of strength schedule and where they are in the standings, they're doing pretty good. Uh, but you might not actually see it from just looking at the standings. Well, and they're tied for fifth with Fnatic, so it's not the worst place to be. Although yeah. it is actually, a, it's a four-way tie. Misfits Gaming and SK Gaming are there too. Yeah. Um, excuse me. Everything's just sorted in alphabetical order, so I forgot about them for a second. Um, yeah, I think it's actually, it's it's crazy how much Udyr has risen. And for XL, it's hard for me to be like over the moon, but I do think we saw some better things for them. And it was, especially for Torre, it was like two completely different games, uh -huh, right? Sure. And so I'm I'm hoping that we get more of the game two performance as opposed to the game one performance versus Mad Lions where mm -hmm. they got completely obliterated in yeah. lane. And Tor and on top of that, Torre also griefed it in a few instances where he's like headbutting the Leona back into his AD carry when he's already doomed. Yeah. And, you know, it's... Definitely wasn't great. But the follow-up game, I think they were playing um, Zyra Khan or something like this. Yep. And they were popping off in fights. This was much better for sure by Torre. Yeah, getting 2v2 killed in lane like that many times, obviously... Well, Diff does come into into question, but then in team fights the next game they played really well. So in terms of strength schedule, I think XL is in a good upwards trajectory. Mm -hmm. I think the Stonks there could be pretty good if they have a couple new a couple of weak teams coming up the next couple of weeks. I think they could skyrocket up to fourth, fifth where they are right now, stay around there. Uh, whereas other teams like SK perhaps or uh, Vitality might have a tougher schedule. Yeah. So they play SK and uh, Misfits. Okay. Speaking of, so SK probably had I would consider that a tougher schedule overall. SK also supposed to play Mad, so in theory a pretty difficult week for them, but. That kind of wraps it up for for the last week recap. Um, the final thing mm -hmm. I gotta notice is legal is inviting the three best junglers in the league onto Euphoria, legal or illegal. There's so many ways to approach this. Hmm. What do I do? It was kind of meant to be a transition. I just thought you you, oh. just, you could just go illegal, legal, and then it cuts. Yeah, or like, wow, it's too illegal. It's too op. This is my like clickbait answer. You can give a real answer. I was just kind of <laughs> no, like, this is completely my, legal. This is my corny. Transition. No, I can't wait to talk to them. I'm so <laughs> interested. I'm so interested how they like everything works. I mean, that the Polish trio, dude. Let's do it then. It's completely insane. Let's talk to them. Let's do it. All right, welcome, gentlemen. I've gathered you here today to talk about the jungle. Each of you are masters of your craft. We are joined by none other than Selfmade from Fnatic, Inspired from Rogue, and Yankos from G2. Um, so yeah, before we go any further, thank you to each of you for waking up at the ungodly early hour of 10 a.m. to be on this show. I'm sure all of you would literally rather be asleep right now, but <laughs> I think the fans will appreciate um, the sacrifice that you've made here. But to uh, kick us off, we want to bring uh, start with something a little bit more fun, a little more laid back. We asked each of you to bring some paper and a Sharpie or other marker. And Cajal Art and I are going to ask some questions. And when we ask the question, we don't want you to answer out loud for this pers first part. We want you to write it as gigantic as you can on that sheet of paper or whiteboard or whatever you've got with you. Uh, and then when we say so, hold up your answer to the camera at the same time. Does that make sense? Sure. Yep. Uh, all right. Who is the best jungler in Europe? excluding yourself currently <laughs> currently currently <laughs> but like i still think all of ourselves no or just, just, just yourself, yourself individually just yankos yeah, can't write yankos okay. self-made can't write self-made i'm pretty sure we, we both i mean we all gonna have the same, same answer 
I hope at least. <laughs> I think I know what they wrote. <laughs> Wait, but it's in. It's actually so. Wait, it's, it's actually so awkward. Like, it's actually so awkward. <laughs> but that's the point, my dude. That's my point. We're trying to get you out of your shell. We're trying to wake you up, and you know. I, I want you to know that someone's sleeping like right behind me, so I will wake the person up just it, for you as well. That's that's good. Love if it. It's wonderful. It's, it's just fine. a malice. It's fine. Oh, nah, yeah. It's just. It's not a player. It's sort of. <laughs> Dimitri's fine. He doesn't need any more sleep. Um. Okay, so reminder, best jungler in Europe that is not yourself. Everybody have their answer written down? I think they should all have the right answer. It's going to be all the same. I think I know who they put. Okay, everybody ready? Actually, actually, no, mm -hmm. give me a second, give me a second. A second, I have a... I just uh, forgot about him. I think it's right, I just realized too. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm ready. Oh, no. Yeah, I'm ready as well. Okay, all right. Everybody hold it up the camera in three, two, one. What do we got? Oh my God, you did. <laughs> Guys, I want to congratulate you on, I was like, I was hoping that we'd like, we were going to end up no matter what with like two names, right? Maybe both self-made and Yankos mm. put like inspired, you know, and inspired put someone else. And we we're going to have this awkward situation where two people, but by answering God Gilius, you guys have brilliantly <laughs> dodged the bullet and, and put Yankos in a really awkward position, which I, <laughs> and that was pretty funny. So you know that feels even worse. I just lost to Schalke as well. So it's like a perfect, you know, <laughs> that is actually a perfect, perfect timing, isn't it? It did beat you. Yeah, it's fair. All right, Kedra, what you got? Let's... So uh, the next question is, which of you three are more likely to miss a skill shot on a stunned target? Now we saw Elio do this <laughs> last week, I think it was. All right, so remember, it's only you three that are eligible for answer. Which of, you, which of the three of you is most likely to miss a skill shot on the stunned target? Show your answer in three, two, one. Me on Nidley. Oh, self-made. Once again, the honorable but answer again, from self-made puts himself under the bus, but I inspired, wrote, I love I it. Wrote me. Okay, I will expand it. I wrote myself because like it was two weeks ago or last week, we played a lot of um, Nidalean screams and my spirits were flying through enemies. <laughs> flying past windows. Yeah, but like all of them were stunned. I think it was a skin or something. I just couldn't land the spear. Is it, is it was really confusing. Could be the Nidley bug. Nidley bug. The one that misses all the crabs as well. Oh, right. I mean, you know, they just they just released Viego, so this game is clearly not fucked at all. Right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Viego is uh, looking nice, looking nice and balanced from what I've seen. But I'm glad that we got at least a little bit of Yankos roasting in there. Thank you. Like, the, the thing is with Yankos is that he was missing spears that are easy to miss. You know what I mean? Not on the stand targets. Nice. Mm. Way to stand up for your boy. You know what I mean? Like yes. backing see, him up. You see, that I'm, gonna, I'm not alone in this because, <laughs> because like let's be real, skill shots are 50-50 that you hit them or you don't, right? That's true. In most ways. Sven also infamously said, if you have a if you have hands and a mouse, you can dodge an Italy sphere spear. So famous quote. Famous quote. Yeah. Um, Kato, there is it. some truth behind it too. <laughs> Kato, give us the next one. Of the three junglers here. Which one is most likely to miss a smite in a game five scenario? Let's do it in three, sure. two, one. What do you got? <laughs> it's always two answers that are the same. No, no. Oh, that's all three, actually. It's a three L. Oh my god. Wait, Inspire, why is it you? Wait, I don't know. I, mean, I, I was I was just thinking between me and Selfmate because uh, we both missed some smites already, so <laughs> <laughs> I just I just thought maybe maybe voting for me would be better. <laughs> I mean, I used to okay, miss a lot of smites, like but the... not in best of five games. Like mm. I remember the smite I missed against G two, right? It was in the summer split, I think. There was also one at the Drake that was really awkward. I think it was against Mad Lions. But okay. when it comes to best of fives, the longer the series go, the more comfortable I feel like. So on game five, I most likely wouldn't choke. And I wrote inspired because last year I felt like they were regular split kings and when playoffs came, they just all choke. So <laughs> <laughs> I, I just, I just 
I just still remember the cops and they're stealing our Nash when we are all looking at him uh, over the pit. Oh no, <laughs> and no. We yes. know, and we all know what's gonna happen. <laughs> yeah. We just kept looking at the, him. The infamous 2020 Sindra Baron steals. Oh, there were so many oh, of them. Oh god, yeah. Oh, it's so obnoxious. Abilities that out damage spite, smite seem really balanced. Um, next question. Which of you, of the three of you, is the most toxic in solo queue? <laughs> oh, wow, I can already tell what self made, Rose. <laughs> Let's reveal in three, two, one. <laughs> what is fire? Why is it always yeah. fire? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I know the dark side of Inspire, you guys don't know it, but I think I'm still the more toxic one. All right, well, okay, yeah, let's... Maybe the, the L9 self-made is still, still there. The yeah. L9 self-made. The l 9 I forgot about L9 self-made. Oh, man. Don't, don't bring it back. <laughs> it's all good, dude. I, I trust in your, uh, your desire to play competitive. No, it's actually funny because when I was in L9, I was the least toxic. I ever was, you know. Okay, yeah, but come on, that's. I like... actually, I actually think this off season in 2020, right? I was the most toxic I've ever been. Wow, that's like not a good thing to say on like. A... <laughs> 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 we'll, we'll cut that part out. We'll replace I'm it. You don't, you don't have to. You don't have to cut it. I'm completely honest. I'm aware of myself. You know, like. I respect okay. it. There is nothing to hide. <laughs> That's, that's probably the best attitude. Mm. Now we're instantly going to have a ref next week, like checking your soul, scrubbing through the solo key chat logs. <laughs> and and the game chats. Why, why did it Inspired wrote himself? Yeah, that's the bet. That's actually, you're, you're completely right, self made. Inspired. What, what is this dark side? Mm. You're, usually you feel so like chill and respectable. What, what is this dark side? Well, I'm getting usually pretty tilted while playing solo queue, so sometimes uh, I, I type something, but um, yeah, I try to, I try to not because. Yeah, it won't really change much if you type in solo queue, but yeah, I sometimes couldn't really control myself. <laughs> I love that feeling. Sometimes I've disabled my enter key, but it just makes me even more mad. Yeah, yeah, I feel that. I've turned I've turned uh, all chat off for that exact reason, because it's just never profitable for me to talk to anyone on the enemy team. Um, last question, and this will kind of segue us into our, our proper discussion. Uh, on a scale of 1 to 10, how good is the current jungle? But in solo queue or in competitive? Uh, let's, let's say competitive, because I think we yeah. want to talk mostly about competitive. But we'll talk about solo queue a bit too. But for this answer, let's just do um, competitive. All right, you guys ready? Sure. Yeah. All right. Three, two, one. What's everybody got? Seven, six, eight. Dang, that's a pretty, it's pretty close. <laughs> pretty close spread, all things considered. So let's let's actually start to talk about the jungle then. Now that we're done with this, thanks guys for <laughs> for answering some of these questions. And I still love that Inspired got got three would in the uh, most likely to miss a smite <laughs> contest. Um, but let's talk about the current state of the jungle. Um, right now, there's like there's a ton going on. Obviously, people are seeing Gore Drinker Olaf and they're just like, jungle is giga broken, but I wanna know how you feel about it. You can talk about whether that's like, do you think it's balanced? Do you think that it's just really OP? But in general, how do you guys feel about the jungle meta? And uh, why don't we start with you, Inspired? Mm, and I still think that uh, jungle in solo queue is for sure the most, uh, the most rock and roll, but uh, in competitive, I think it's not that OP as in solo queue, but it's still very strong. But uh, I think the most important thing is that you have like good, uh, good teamwork with your teammates. So it's not really only about the jungler that is good and then your role is so OP that you're gonna carry every game. So I think in competitive, it's not that OP. How do, you, how do you guys feel on the other end? Yanko self-made. Do you guys also agree that it's not that OP and competitive and that it's mostly solo queue that a lot of the like perception that jungle is really OP comes from? I mean, probably right. I mean, I think in competitive jungle is actually in a strong position or at least like stronger posi position than it was during, for example, Ardent sensor meta from like 2000 <laughs> something, something. I don't know. Yeah, remember, 17, I think. Yeah, yeah, I think 17, yeah. So for example, like back then, I remember that you were only playing Colossus junglers and you couldn't actually do damage. You were just for CC. And as soon as AT Carry got Ardent sensor, it was like unplayable, right? Like you would just kill everyone. So you, mm -hmm. you were just a pillar. 
Right now, you can actually, you know, carry it, like self-made proved it, like last year, for example, when he was playing stuff like Graves um, as like one of the first ones in Europe. He was kind of smurfing, <laughs> even though he didn't win many games, this. but <laughs> he was playing well. <laughs> so um, I think that, uh, you know, right now yeah. we should have like a lot of carry champions, especially if people open stuff like uh, Talia and Olaf and maybe Pantheon some games. Uh, you can really pop off, right? I think we all of us had like an Olaf game this weekend and all of us were like yeah. pretty fed. Um, but yeah, I mean, in solo case, definitely the most broken because people just don't really watch the map. So you just run around, get kills and become the most OP champ in the game. And self-made from, from your perspective, how do you feel as well? I mean, there's like, generally people seem... I, well, I complain about this for many months already and I feel like jungle is two man role right now and it's all, all, all about the jungle and support playing together. Mm. If you are insane good jungler, but you get support gapped, you want too much. Mm. And do you think this is the best meta that jungle's ever seen, like in terms of carry and um, impact? Well, if you full clear a few times and don't die, you are usually ahead in experience than your lanes, which is something that wasn't a thing in the past. So I think that kind of explains everything itself. Mm. And yeah, jungle seems pretty, pretty, pretty strong. And I think the follow-up question to that would be, because I think what I've seen the last couple of weeks in the LEC especially is, you have a counts big jungle, but you just don't have any priority lanes, so it doesn't really matter. Do you kind of feel the same that priority lanes are the most important thing, self-made? Mm, well, winning lanes, like especially in early game, will obviously give you like an indicator where to play for and kind of build already a game plan. But like the game where I counter last picked Evelyn against Mad Lions, it came out of nowhere. I didn't play Evelyn single time this year. People just wanted Pantheon top lane and I said, I'm going to figure out some AP jungler. <laughs> and I just went for Evelyn and I played really, really bad game. And because of the fact that I was on my signature champion, whoever you want to call it, it made me feel really, really bad afterwards. Damn, dude. That's brutal because it is just a single game, but obviously it sucks to you. Yeah, uh, fail on a champion that you're known for. Yeah, it's like Yankos losing a game on Sejuani. You, just, you would just hate to see it. Um, I'll sorry. Listen, it's the free shot, dude. It's it's just like the easy target from from 2019. <laughs> I'll, I'll take the shots where I can get them. So I, I, you guys have obviously all been playing the game for a really long time, um, regardless if it's been on stage or just in solo queue. And I'm curious, does this? Kedro asked about like how powerful the meta is, but I want to know if this is your favorite meta. Do you enjoy playing in a meta where it is? It does feel very much like you get to power farm as much as you want the ganking isn't really like an expectation that your laners have but is something that's nice that you can do or would you guys prefer one of the older metas or a different meta where it was you know the sejuani's the the lee sins the elises more maybe more early game less farming more gank focused what was actually the best meta the most fun meta for you guys to play in as junglers uh yankos why don't we start with you well i think that for me uh i suppose the most variety um is the most fun right if i can play like anything i want it should be pretty fun. And right now I feel like at least in solo queue, I can kind of play everything I want. There are still like certain champions that are most likely the strongest. So if I really want to win a game, I will maybe not pick stuff like Ramos or Sejuani, right? But if I want to, for some reason, play tanks, I can. Uh, and if I want to play niche carries, I can, right? So I think since the game is changing every year and the meta is shifting every year as well, right? So it's not too boring. Um, it also doesn't stay boring for me as a professional player because i've been playing the game forever and i pretty much played in every possible meta there was so shifting between them is what makes it fun for me so i don't really care if this year is like a carry meta or a tank meta or a jungle dog meta or only gang meta i will just play and it's gonna be fun anyway uh, that's a wholesome attitude to have I thought for sure you would have a preference but i like that you're ready for anything inspired for you like what are you thinking what do you like because when you came in you were playing Olaf before Olaf was, you know, Gore Drinker OP when it was just, I don't know, every big brain analyst was like, oh, Olaf is so broken. You just get so far ahead in the jungle. And then I felt like it did nothing. But you you felt like a guy that was power farming before people were power farming. So I'm curious how you feel about the uh, the current meta. Mm, well, I like the current meta, but it's not like it's my favorite because uh, even when you play like trandles and uh, sejuani or whatever and you play for your team it's also kind of fun because mm. uh, then you do something different because uh, and then it's like more um, how to say it like you don't really expect before the game what's gonna happen because you have to adapt in the game 
when you play those kind of chance because you don't know how your teammates will do and how you want to play around them. Uh, for example, like how the lane states will go uh, uh, and something like that. But when you play stuff like Graves and, and uh, Nidalee, most of the time you know what's going to be your game plan. So the game is kind of like similar. Every game is kind of similar. That's what I feel. And uh, yeah, that's why that's why it's also fun to play tank junglers. I think both, both styles are pretty fun to play. I want to be honest. I kind of expected you guys all to just be like, "Hell yeah! Give me the money! Give me the power! Give me the chance to carry." These Always are very, carry. very balanced answers. Uh, Self-made. How do you, how do you feel about, especially about that last point that inspired me about how like sometimes the the tank jungle games are a bit more interesting because you have to be more dynamic and responding to the lanes, whereas farm junglers a lot of the time it feels set. How, how do you feel about that? I mean, you know, I remember my Sejuani games when I came into LEC, and it didn't look like like I was playing a tank Sejuani, if you know what I mean. I remember the but, highlight where you like sniped. I think it was reckless specifically yeah. on Sejuani from downtown. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, you know, I was just pressing ultimates on cooldown, drifting all the all over the place. But you know, talking about this tank meta compared to carry jungle meta, um, personally, I obviously prefer the carry jungle meta just because not of the fact that there is more responsibility in your hands, but because there is always bigger champion pool. When there's a, you know, meta where you can basically kill people yourself, mm. you can play anything you want. And when it's tank meta, you usually go down to like three, four champions, which is what Trandel, Zag, Ragaz, Sejuani, right? That was the things for the previous years. And of course, it's kind of boring to play, but if that's going to bring you victories, then you have to adapt and just go for it. And I think the last five years, jungle has changed so much in the way that Riot tries to nerf or balance it so much with like changing XP, camp respawn timers, jungle items. And Yankos, you've been around for the longest in terms of competitive scene. Do you think that Riot have made jungle, is, is jungle in a good spot right now in terms of strong slash weak? Or do you think that's, what would you change in the jungle to make it uh, more balanced? Would you, would you reduce the camp timers? Would you increase them? Would you reduce the XP? What would you actually do to the jungle to make it more balanced overall? I mean, probably when it comes to impact on the map, um, it's slightly like less than it used to be because I feel like if you used to gang a lot, you wouldn't fall as far behind in the past because first of all, the camp spawns were would be like two and a half minutes, not two minutes, right? And then I think the catch up XP was higher. So if you had like a clever pathing where you try to not necessarily force ganks, but either stay on the map a little bit longer or um, yeah, maybe be a bit tricky with your ganks. Uh, you wouldn't get like as punished for it. But now if you play gank force style, uh, you will most likely fall behind to enemy jungle pretty fast if he's just full clearing. So it does bring maybe a little bit less variety to that because you are still forced to play champions that are carries. And that's why in my opinion, Uder is like so strong now, right? He has insane edit game pressure without losing on farm since he one stops all the camps. Um, but yeah, if the jungle was like ever in a better spot or not, honestly, I don't know. Like I just play League of Legends, man. I don't think about it too much. So I think uh, I think it's a good spot right now, definitely. Uh, especially for solo queue, it feels super broken. Like you can kind of be ten percent HP, then go do one camp, you're full um, HP since the jungle item changes, and then on top of that, you get yeah, a lot of gold. Uh, gold drinker is a boosted, b busted item and there's a lot of junglers that use it. So, I mean, I think it's it's pretty strong, definitely. Yeah. So um, for, for you, Inspired and Selfmade, I'm, I'm, I'm curious when you, uh, when you look at jungle right now, like, do you agree with Yankos on the sentiment that gold drinker is just completely and totally busted? Like, is this just an item that has to be changed as a jungler? Because laners are using it too. And obviously all three of you, if it is a busted item, have been abusing it on stage in your Olaf games. Is this is this like the biggest problem with like a champion like Olaf right now? It's just how ludicrously powerful an item like gold drinker is? Well, it is strong item itself, but also champions like Olaf or Aatrox, the most popular one that uses this item, they have built in their kit that they increase healing from any resources, which makes good drinker be even more OP, right? Yeah. I like mean, personally, I, I'm pretty sure I could go play Olaf and build Stride Breaker or whoever is the item called. Mm -hmm. And it would be most likely a bit worse, but still playable. Mm. Inspired. Mm. But the problem I have with your drinker is that, sorry for interrupting. No, you're fine, like, you're fine, fine. The problem yeah, I fine. have with this item is that People build this item on assassins that are meant to build lethality, just because lethality items are so bad. And that's the only thing that bothers me, you know? 
Mm. Like you, you see all these Talon one tricks, the Rengar one tricks in solo queue, they all build Gold Drinker instead of Dustbit or whatever they are meant to build. And it's just super hard to deal with them. And they deal insane amount of damage at the same time. I think that's a fair point. Actually, I'm... I have to like jump on that. I completely <laughs> agree. When I get like Talon one trick, then this guy's building Gold Drinker and having so much it's damage crazy. running around my jungle with like over the walls, you know, I can kill him, but like... So it is so actually it's great. It's it might it might be a little bit unbalanced. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. But it's fine. I, I want your perspective on the, on the whole Gore Drinker thing. Um, how you feel about it, built on you know non Bruiser champions, but also just in general, what, what your thoughts are on the item. Um, I think it's like a big buff for all the Bruisers because before you either had to commit into Warrior and then you are very squishy, but you deal a lot of damage, or you just go Cinder Hulk and you are basically not a damage dealer, but you are tanky. While now you can have both in one item, which makes you tanky, but also deal a lot of damage. So, um, yeah, before you couldn't do that, before you had to choose one, while now you have both in one item. <laughs> so it sounds balanced. Yeah, it sounds, it sounds really balanced. balanced. Yeah. yeah, I think after watching competitive over the last couple of weeks, I think the only Natality items I ever saw was in yesterday's series with TLC9, or well, day before, sorry with the fasting center that was the only champion i've seen lethality built on everything else just core drinker i think the collector is the only lethality item we ever see yeah, and it's collector. always on, on carries right but yeah you saw an umbral glaive one time from sven and yeah. that's the only lethality item we've seen damn that's yeah insane. but like it is lethality item but it's not like the main lethality item yeah. a bit like the mythic one right they yeah. made those mythic items with a purpose and nobody builds them i think odo built eclipse in the game that he played in jay's top and that's about it and i think that's probably just because core drinker has to yeah i'm thinking like, like dust radio right? moves you know Edge yeah, of yeah. yeah i know but even but even just the mythics no one's building it right mm. and it's it's actually crazy outside of champions yeah, like so so how about the, wait, wait. there are three mythic right there is dust blade there is eclipse and how is the third item called oh god it's something the active prowlers prowlers called yeah, sand swipe is the active the rex i guess <laughs> yeah i mean it, it is a good item on Rexa, but i think it's like when you go for it on Rexa, you are so squishy it's still better to go for stride breaker or even gore drinker i would say like I remember when they released those new items, I was actually excited for Prowler's clone Rexai. Mm. And like Yeah. Yeah, it's cool to one shot people, but at the same time you kill one guy and you are dead afterwards. Or unleash it as well to look flashy. Yeah, I remember I remember the first few weeks. Oh yeah, people were doing that, but nowadays nobody does this item. Like there is not a single champion that builds it. Yeah. Is this do you guys actually think that like more item pass open up if they nerf core drinker a little bit, or do you just think that like it's just overall so good that even if they hit the stats a little bit, that kind of what inspired it earlier, where it gives you the best of both worlds, just makes it such an ideal item? I mean, the gold drinker is basically you get black cleaver, right? Stats wise, and empower to the on Q. <laughs> It's true. I'm going to be honest. It's just like when you describe it like that, it just really does not in any way sound uh, like a wholesome experience to play. But that's how it is, right? Yeah. (laughs) I guess it's what you have to do. And I I mean, from someone on the outside, it always looks cool that there is one item that you can buy. Because I did notice last year, like anytime anyone would pick Jarvan, I was like, is it a warrior game? And is he trying to one shot people? Or is it a Cinderhole game? And he's doing literally zero damage for the rest of the game. So at least now he gets both. <laughs> so now, now we know it's a Gore Drinker game. <laughs> <laughs> now it's a Gore Drinker game every game. Um, so I, I'm also, one of the things that we always look at whenever we talk about international competition is, is you guys are also three people who have been to Worlds. Um, but one thing that always comes up f- right before Worlds is like how great solo queue is in other countries, usually Korea, sometimes China, um, that people mention this is. And I'm, I'm curious about specifically what changes for you guys when you go play solo queue abroad um, in other countries on other servers uh, as compared to laners. Because laners, it's very easy for me to understand, just like better lane opponents, simple. But in the jungle matchup, like how much actually changes in solo queue when you're up against um, or on, playing on like the Korean server? Um, let's do Yankos first. Sure. So... I didn't really play in Korean server this year, I guess. Um, you know, we were playing on the super Chinese server where like everybody was like roaming 24 seven. It was only assassins everywhere. And there was like 50 kills in 20 minutes, which was really fun for jungle, right? Because you get fat and no matter what you play, you most likely end up with kills as long as you can skirmish. So that was really fun experience. Um, on Korean server though, I feel like people play a little bit slower than on the super Chinese server. So you still used to take a lot of skirmishes, but people were like, from my experience at least, people were like a little bit more mindful of the jungler. So the games you could argue that had high, high quality in a way where um, you wouldn't just end up like with free kills everywhere, but you could still like force a lot of skirmishes. 
Um, and I do remember pe people being overall like slightly better mechanically than at least on like the higher ELO than mm. EU West had to offer. And then normally you also play on eight or nine ping uh, when you're in Seoul compared to whatever ping you play in Berlin, which can differ from like 20 to 30 for some people. Yeah, 20 to 60 or 70 for some people. Or, or 80 or 90. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I bet we well, have the I same service provider. <laughs> um, Inspire for you. I think this, and correct me if I'm wrong here, because I know that you guys, you have played on the Chinese super server now. I'm not sure if you've also played in Korean solo queue, but can you talk to me a little about your experiences there? Because I think that you're probably, probably the guy that's the newest to a lot of these international servers. Well, uh, the first game I played in China was uh, I just locked in Evelyn and then enemy mid jungle locked Xinzao, Katarina. And uh, since level two, they were already sitting in my jungle and uh, I basically couldn't farm any cam. Uh, and this never happened in EU solo queue while everyone is just farming and uh, just, just not doing much. But uh, yeah, in, in China, I feel like if people have better champ in the early game, they just use it very hard and they don't really let you play the game. So you need to be more careful how you want to play the game to, to not fall behind if you have weaker champs early. And uh, I think that makes the game more exciting. Do you, think, do you think that's also like just in general better practice or do you think that that's... Is that actually really applicable to solo queue for you where you're not going to see, you know, a Zin Zhao Katarina where people sometimes will push their advantages, sometimes won't with some of these stronger games really? Like, is that actually good practice or is it just more fun solo queue? Mm, I mean, obviously it's a better practice before because you have to like think about stuff that enemies can do to you. Even uh, even though the champ is like Zin is not really played, but for example, if someone plays Graves or something, it can do similar things. So you can... Uh, you can expect people to do that later to you and even in uh, in the scream games or offshore games but also if people are playing aggressive against you it's uh, it's easier for you to like train your mechanics and just uh, have more fun in the game so i think uh, i think overall it just it's just better even for improving and having fun and did you see or notice when you screamed lpl teams that that aggression kind of translated from the super server into the scrims when you played against these chinese teams I don't think uh, it's because in solo queue, people are playing very aggressive without really thinking much sometimes. And I feel like uh, LPL teams, they were, uh, some of them were aggressive, but they were also aggressive with a brain. So they were not just invading you without any reason. Uh, most of the stuff they were doing had some purpose behind it. So, so it wasn't exactly like a solo queue. Yeah. Selfmade, what was your experience with, with kind of, you can talk a little bit about solo queue, maybe a little bit about scrims as well, um, Chinese super server or on any other experiences you had. I'm not sure how many Korean boot camps you've done, but um, I'm curious like, mean, how big of a it difference. Was first, it was first time I played another solo queue or like I, I left basically Europe, right? And I played in Asia and Chinese solo queue on the super server was by far the most fun thing I ever experienced. I can agree with Inspire that the way people play there doesn't transfer fully into competitive but something i noticed there is that first of all they treat they treat jungle like a god right so if jungle wants to contest crap without having any prior lanes will still move there and fight with you <laughs> and yeah it's just like he said when there is for example <clears throat> strong mid jungle and they have push early game they won't let you play the game that's so crazy to me mm. Cause I'm, but also like, I'm obviously like in the other. Like I remember I was playing, I was playing Kha'Zix, right? And then I see enemy team that was like, don't be only Sandra playing duo with some graves. And you know, I knew what's coming level one in my jungle, back to another side level two, just waste my time, waste his time, but it's obviously good, right? And it, it, was, it was really not fun. <laughs> Yeah, I can yeah, imagine. Well, Sandra horrible. Graves duo. When Graves first got reworked and was like actually pretty OP in the jungle, when the, that first Q, when it just way too much damage, I remember that combo was an LCK all the time and it was just mm. actually friggin' miserable. And but when it comes to scrims, the only thing that I saw they do even in scrims, like they do in solo queue, is that whenever they have mid prior, no matter how jungler puffs, he will always try to contest you at the same crap as you go to. Just to double crap you afterwards. Just to match you doing double but, crap, yeah. But, but that's the thing only Chinese people did. Because Koreans, they, they just play standardly. They just full clear a few times, you know. Mm. Take Drake here, take Herald, just relax, drink some tea. 
and so, then they still win, right? So would you say for that reason specifically, uh, Chinese junglers are just naturally better than Korean junglers in solo queue overall, or just even in scrims in general, just because of the aggression? Um, they play much more aggressive, but again, if it's a better way to play the game, I don't know, because as we saw last year, Korea won world, so yeah. they are the best region, right? So then for all of you guys, which region do you actually think has the best junglers in the world and why? Um, we can start with the Yankos on this one, but I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm curious to see just like who you can talk about who the b actual best junglers in the world are, if that matches with the region. But what are your thoughts, Yankos? Yeah, maybe I will not start first. Actually, I'm curious as well. So I will just start second or third. <laughs> you can give it to someone else. <laughs> All right, okay, that's fine. <laughs> nice hand up. All right, Inspired, what do you got for me? You, you've played you've played against everything now. You're a man of the world. Who, which region has the best jungler from your experience so far? Mm, I, I think Chinese junglers are way better than Koreans. I feel like Korean junglers are playing uh, mostly around his laners being good and the Chinese junglers are uh, like getting ahead by themselves. So I think they have like more, they're more unpredictable when you are playing against them. And also when you are watching LPL games, they are doing like some more crazy stuff compared to just normal LCK junglers. So yeah, I think I think LPL junglers are probably better. How, how about for you? Well, Yankos will let you go last since you're just, you're waiting here, sitting, biding your okay. time. And what are your thoughts, self made? Like, what regions do you think has best? Or are there specific junglers that really stand out to you from from competitive play as well that maybe buck the trend or, or stand out? I mean, overall, I felt like just like Inspired said that Chinese junglers were crazy, right? But when I played at Worlds last year, I felt like um, <clears throat> basically LCK had Canyon and LPL had SOFM, right? Yep. Everybody else was like they were good, but you weren't like, wow, this guy is insane. Hmm. Yankos? Uh, yeah, from solo queue experiences, probably LPL or like Chinese junglers were more aggressive. Um, but when I was used to play on like the uh, Korean server, uh, even during MSI in 2019, the story of like, you know, picking Xin Zhao and invading Zhang level two with like mid lane prio was like kind of the same. So I feel like since both regions are so close together and both uh, player bases can play with, on the same server, right? Like a lot of Chinese players also play on Korean server. I feel like it's actually quite similar. Um, but yeah, I would say play the best one right now would be Canyon, right? And then like Selfman mentioned, I think the best jungler from China at the world was probably Sofum. So um, I don't actually know which region is like clearly better. But if I had to choose from solo queue only, I would be biased towards last year's super server. So yeah. China. So you said Canyon and SOFM, but I'd love to hear from each of you who the actual number one best jungler in the world is right now. Like, who do you think is the one that everybody should be looking up to? I mean, yeah. Gilius, right? <laughs> yeah, I agree. I think uh, Gilius yeah. might be number one there. Guys, his ego is going to eclipse the sun if we keep doing this. Like, okay, who's the best non-European jungler in the world? Just so... Not that Gilius isn't a fantastic answer, and I can't wait to see God Gilius absolutely just roll 20 on some nerds, but what, who outside of Europe, who are the best junglers in the world? Who is the best jungler? One best jungler. Yanko, I'm gonna I guess it has to be Canyon, right? Yeah. yeah. But the, the I best still like watching Canyon, the, I guess. The mm. best jungler is like uh, full clearing the fastest, right? Or or I, ganking I, the most. You, or, <laughs> you get it. You get to tell me. I mean, is it is it adaptability? Is it the freedom to do most? Is it is it just who min maxes their PVE farm path the best? I don't know. You're you're definitely the expert here. Well, who's the best for you, Inspired? Hmm. And I, I guess I would say Canyon still, because uh, I think he 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 was playing very good at Worlds, and now he keeps playing very good, even though Damon lost some games, but he's still looking the best. <laughs> hmm. yeah, this is the image of Canyon. Uh, Blessed Wait, Canyon. Actually, talk, talking about him, which skin did he choose? Was it Nidalee or Graves? That's a good question, actually. I actually don't know. I have no idea. I think Graves. I hope it is Graves. Yeah, that'd be sick. That'd be pretty sick. I don't really want another Nidalee skin, to be honest. Mm. I don't have the... I feel like Nidalee's kind of a bait whenever I try to play it. Um, <laughs> but I'm trash, so we'll get away from that discussion. Okay, so what actually makes Canyon the best jungle in the world? And let's talk about that. Because obviously it's easy to go, well, you know, world champion, <laughs> super cool, great, whatever. But what does Canyon actually do? And let's let's keep it um let's keep it like a little bit 
pleb level? Like if you had to break it down for your, let's say randomly gold friend, um, how would you, A, how would you describe like what makes Canyon so good? Uh, anyone who feels really strongly can pick this one up. I mean, mm. I think for me, I would be like as simple as having a lot of priority on lane. <laughs> Having a lot of prime lanes Lame and diff. then playing very well with uh, you know what you have, so just being clever about your pathing and the fact that he's also really good mechanically, right? Because it's not only about like him knowing where to be on the map and what to do on the map, but also he can actually hit skill shots on uh, you know champions. Like he's actually good. So I mean, he's just a good player in a good team. There you go. Anyone else? A little insight yeah, what makes game. Yeah, what what I think is that uh, when you play against him and when you watch him play, he he is able to like win win the fight that he's not supposed to win just because of his mechanics. Uh, I think uh, that's like his biggest strength. It's like uh, whatever he plays, he can still win the matchup because uh, he might outplay the the opponent. While when you see other junglers, like. Sometimes it's just not possible to to win some fight and they are not winning it, but Canyon can like still somehow turn it around. That's so crazy. That's like that's that just... sounds like uh, someone played on stage against Canyon at Worlds as well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's not, you know, definitely you can tell he's got the personal experience. Um, as as kind of like one of the last questions as we start to wrap up here, you guys have obviously all been playing competitive for a while now. Yeah, it's a little longer than than the other two, but uh, I'm curious when you guys were coming up in the pro scene, when you were climbing the ladder, when you were when you decided I wanted to be a professional player, who did you look up to as a jungler or as a pro player? Like who did you look up to and be like I want to be like that player? I mean, I guess I can start because for me it was like so long ago. Yeah. So I was looking up to Diamond Prox um, back in the day wow. uh, when he was in Moscow Five. They were like the first team to beat um, Asian teams, and they were actually like really good at the game, right? And he was like clearly the best jungler. He was pretty good at like playing everything basically. So I would always look up to him before I started my pro career. Inspired, self-made. Either one of you can go next. Mm, I didn't really look up to anyone. I was just playing solo queue and enjoying the game. Mm. And once I reached Challenger, my friends told me to just make Twitter. And after like two days, I got my first offer and I just went for it. It was a pretty simple story for me. All right, dang. How about for you, Inspire? Mm. I mean, I didn't really watch anything uh, with League until I got like, I got challenger on East server, then I transferred to West and I, I got like stuck in Diamond 1 for for like a few months. And uh, then I think I was just watching like obviously high level players uh, from from EU and uh, Jankos was like the, the highest jungler streaming. So I was mostly watching Jankos streams, I guess. But I never had something that uh, I was like looking up to anyone that uh, I want to be like him. I, will, I always wanted to grind the game because I really like to play. So I wanted to get higher elo. So I had to like learn from 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 people to to just be better. Yeah. Interesting how many of these like you guys are very independent. Although I like the Diamond Prox chat. It's been a long time since yeah. we've got, had a chance to talk about Diamond Prox in any context. Okay, final question. One or two word answers. Because I know this comes up probably in like one out of five interviews that you guys do. Um, but... Why are Polish junglers so good? All right, let's go. You're going to have this. <laughs> three of you here. You're the best junglers in the league. You're all Polish. I feel like I'd be doing the Polish fans a disservice if I didn't at least let you get in like one Poland shout out. So like, self, maybe we can start with you since you knew that it was coming. What makes Polish junglers so good in, in one sentence or in a couple words? One sentence or a couple words? I actually don't know how to answer this question. I always thought to myself, and I was usually saying this in interviews, that I think why Polish junglers are the best is because, you know, jungle role is a role that gets bullied the most. And Polish people are usually like, you know, strong and independent, and we don't really care if people flame us, so we just keep going. Maybe that's why. Polish people are strong and independent. Mm. They don't need laners. They don't need anybody else. <laughs> right. Up until the level three crab fight, then you might need your laner. <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> yeah, because, yeah, that's, uh, that's the only thing. Uh, Inspire, why do you think Polish junglers are so good or so successful? I don't know. I, I felt like uh, jungle was the easiest role to play because uh, 
you just play against monsters, so it's not it's not that hard like PB. others. Maybe maybe me maybe we just uh, like to play against monsters. Don't really like to fight in lane one v one. I don't know. <laughs> All right. I okay. like the okay Yankos. Yeah, I mean, I I don't know. Like <laughs> I don't know what to tell you. Um, we are just that good at the game. What can I say? There I think go. we actually have like more and more polls joining uh, LAC currently yep. as well. So I'm curious to see if we can like bring back the years where we had a lot of Polish people playing. So every year it's more. We have a lot of academy players being good at the game. So I'm quite curious what will happen like one or two years. Yeah, what do we got? We got Trimby and Czech Ladder, both Polish. That's dope. So yeah, see how many more Polish players get added to the league. Uh, I'm going to ask one final question to put it specifically inspired on the spot. So sorry for this one. Um, as we wrap up, one thanks you all for being here. But inspired, our match of the week is G2 versus Fnatic. And if I ask G2 or Fnatic to predict, you can probably guess what the answer is going to be. So inspired, who's going to win? Is it Yankos or Selfmade? Hmm, I mean, I, I want to. I, I will. I will tell you after the draft. But before draft, I think uh, G2 will win. But maybe if they will, uh, they will end the draft like they did against Schalke, then Fnatic will <laughs> will take it. All right. Just Good let answer. us know on Twitter if you're if you're done with your games for the day. You can tweet out your prediction. We'll give you the try to get you the cheeky mm. LEC retweet. But um, thank you guys so much for coming on and talking about the jungle. It was interesting to hear your perspective on, on the patch and the history Definitely. and kind of also the global meta as well. Um, and good luck to each of you in your upcoming games this week. Uh, excited to see what happens. Oh, and look forward to this really weird thing that we made for the G two fanatic matchup hype trailer. Weird that, thing. It's very. It's it's definitely out of the comfort zone. <laughs> Wait, when is it coming out? It's on. When one, it it's on out? Wednesday. Um, and it's sadly tomorrow. inspired. It's just about G two and Fnatic. We'll get some rogue stuff in there too. But it's. We'll we'll see. We'll see yeah. if you guys like it. You can you can let me know. But in the meantime, thank you for lending us your expertise as the best junglers in the league. And we'll see if next time we invite three people and it's the three best junglers. Maybe maybe finally we get a Spanish jungler in here. Maybe a Danish jungler makes a comeback, but they've been on the fall. But for now, it's the Polish Trinity keeping the top of the league looking strong. Really good to hear um, from so many of the very talented junglers in our Definitely. scene. Obviously, more people that we'd love to talk to in the future, but I like getting all three of the almost all of our world's jungle representatives since shadow wasn't uh and cajal isn't yeah and cajal <laughs> cajal's here too don't forget about cajal <laughs> no, it's important to have the contrast because maybe he can check something because maybe they're like yeah this is what we used to do in scrimmage you'd be like wait really we yeah. never did that on yeah i guess no it's really interesting i think they are definitely the three best junglers in europe and i think that they probably will be for this foreseeable year or two yeah. i'm going to be honest we were really fishing for the uh, we looked up to Yanko's answer from mm. Selfmade Inspired, trying to bring it full circle. But Selfmade's mm. like, I mean, up to his name, right? He's a Selfmade he man. Self he's unconcerned. Man. Inspired's like, I watch Yanko's streams. Good lad, Inspired. Caught the yeah. bait we were trying to send out. But he's like, but I didn't look up to anyone. Almost had the father-son <sighs> thing going on there. <sighs> we're trying. Father-son and the Selfmade Passes man. on the torch. <laughs> you go for it. Yeah, because Yanko's has been around for a while now. You know, he's a uh, 95. So he's a... Uh, He's not 95. He's from 1995. 1995. Born, yeah. yeah, he's just not 95. But it's kind of like being 95 in the pro scene. You're getting old. I'm only a year behind. And, but I have retired. And you are retired. So. Yeah. So, hmm. Well, we'll see. Wasn't, wasn't double lift like 28? X Smithy was like 28. So, he's got That's time. true. He's got time. He's got time. Yeah, I hope age, he's... I think age is relative to the eSport. So, like, if you look at CSGO, I think they grew with the eSport. And now, yep. lots of CSGO pros are late 20s. Um, even though some are in their early 20s there's, still there's obviously. definitely also some young guys coming up too which is actually really cool that like yeah. that interesting blend of of much older and much younger players i wonder what the cap will slowly i think the cap's been pushing you know at first like five I years want, ago it was 21 now it's 25 ish i want yankos to be the oldest i want yankos to get to like 33 you which means i'll be him. yeah but just imagine well no not just for the meme just because it would be cool you know what i mean yeah like so as so as was up there and now so as is is shilling a little bit so Shilling. We'll have to see. Um, that said, as exciting as all the junglers are, next week we've got G2 or Fnatic. And you heard from Inspired. This week. This week. This week. Yeah. This Friday. This Saturday, rather. This Saturday. G2 or Fnatic. Game five. Kadro and I will be casting it alongside Ender, I believe. Yep. So you're going to get that sweet, sweet tri cast. Mm -hmm. um, and where do we even go? Inspired said, if G2 don't run it and draft is looking like a G2 favored game, what are what are your thoughts? What are you actually hyped about when it comes to watching this matchup? I feel like G2 always like to run it and draft in the regular season because um, the way I see it, this is this is how I like to kind of uh, break it down. Okay, so solo queue is a training ground for new players and a... No, let me rephrase it. 
Solo queue is a proving ground for new players yep. and a training ground for pro players. Whereas I think the LEC regular split is a training ground <laughs> for, for G2, G2 and a proving ground for everyone else. So I feel like G2, that's why they make those drafts because they're just testing things or they're for funding it a bit because they know they'll probably get the playoffs anyway, probably win the split, you know, like they have the usual. <sighs> so, that's true. But I think against Fnatic, they won't do it because it's a rivalry. They won't run it in draft. That's the one team that they will draft good against, other than Rogue maybe, and they'll put a lot of effort into. So I would be G2 favorite. Um, obviously, I think Inspired has a point. I think draft is quite important right now. If you get really bad solo lane matchups or draft to get outscaled, you can struggle if you don't make too many plays. So I would be slightly G2 favorite. Even though Fnatic have looked really good the last two games and they've yeah. really, really brought it together, I think the game could be pretty close actually because G2, all their wins have had lots of kills. Yep. Whereas Fnatic's been a lot more cleaner recently. Um, but I think that I think the jungle matchup will be really important. I mean, we saw Selfmade um, and Yankos there. I think like things like Olaf and Pantheon, if one of these junglers get them, I think it could be a bloodbath. Yeah, I want to see what planning it is. Because you heard from Selfmade that he kind of was put in this position where he had to just pick an AP jungler kind of on the fly. Yeah. Um, and that sounds really difficult. And I know that he he sounded pretty bummed out, to put it simply, about his most recent performance and, y and Yankos and G2 obviously coming off a win. So for the sake of this game, I hope... Um, they both just demolish their Friday opponents just so they can come in max confidence so we don't have the situation, you know. And admittedly, sorry, Astralis and Vitality, like, then you're the fodder to give us this great matchup. But I want everyone coming in full strength, full confidence, like, yeah. fully knowing what full they want. Full anime arc. Yeah, full anime arc. Like, every time they play... Powered up. I think that it's probably not fair to say that every time they play that it's like a banger and they're they're going 100% for both teams. Like, I don't think that's true. But that's what I want every yeah. time we see these teams play. And I'm ready, frankly, to see... How the bot lanes stack up i think we're still waiting to see upset hill is saying fully um integrate i mm. think is is like a, maybe the best word for it even though we did see some really positive stuff in their last games i think the interesting thing about g2 fanatic is it, there's like this vibe in the atmosphere you know you can like kind of sense it when it's the game starting because like g2 versus any of the team fanatic versus any of the team you know it can go like a storm fanatic can make loads of mistakes but there's just something in the air when that matchup happens and you know something great's going to come out of it whether it's like a great game some new picks, some clutch moments, because I feel like both teams kind of ascend to another level when they face each other in a subconscious way. It's really hard to put your finger on it, but I feel like when they know they're playing against each other, they are much more prone to actually do things properly or make less yeah. mistakes, be less sloppy, make sure they cover their, uh, like any, any holes on the map or anything like this. So that's what I love about this kind of matchup, because when you put, a, when you put history behind the matchup, it makes it so in the present moment of the, of the actual matchup itself, there's a lot more focus into it. And there's a lot more pressure on it. So these players are a lot more determined to actually win, a lot more motivation and stuff like this. So a lot more emotions behind the matchup than you'd think, I suppose. Yeah, I'm ready. I'm ready for it to be a banger. I'm ready yeah. for us to cast it. I'm ready for it to be a total and absolute bloodbath. That's, of course, the final game on Saturday, G2 versus Fnatic match of the week. Um, I'm not sure if my the schedule I have in front of me is the most up-to-date, but it looks like we're potentially kicking off with Schalke versus Rogue. If we're not kicking off with, kicking off with it, it's a day one matchup that I'm most certainly excited for. But this has been Euphoria Season 7, Episode 3. I'm Dracos. That's Cadrill, and we'll see you next week for another fantastic episode, or we'll see you Saturday for an absolutely banging match of the week cast. Either All the way, best. casting yeah, it. Casting Let's it. Let's go. Either way, we'll be excited to see you wherever we see you next. Thank you so much for listening slash watching, and uh, we'll see you all next time. See ya.